Adobe After Effects and Apple Motion oftentimes get compared with each other. That's because they have a lot of similarities, especially when it comes to motion graphics. However, the UI is vastly different. And so today we're gonna take a look at 10 things from Adobe After Effects, and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do them in Apple Motion. The first thing I wanna take a look at is motion tracking. So of course, in Adobe After Effects, all you would do is select whatever scene you want to get motion tracked. You would go into your tracker options and select track motion. Now this is for the point tracker, not the mocha tracker. This isn't a full Adobe tutorial. This is more about Apple Motion. So then you'd find whatever object you wanna track. Let's say we wanna track this car, and then I would analyze it. Then if we wanted to apply this, we would of course need another object. So I'll select new, and then we'll select a null object. We'll change our target to be that null object, and then we would push apply. So now this null object has that same motion, and it's fantastic. So how do we do this in Apple Motion? So in Apple Motion, all you would do is select the scene that you want to be tracked, just like in After Effects. Then you would go up to Behaviors, and go down to Motion Tracking and select Analyze Motion. Now instead of a point tracker, this is going to give you the object tracker. And so I'll go ahead and shrink this down to about the size of the car. And then we'll go ahead and push Analyze. And so this is gonna go through and track the car. Now if we wanted to apply this motion, we would actually need to have another object. So I'm gonna add a rectangle. Then we would go up to Behaviors, Motion Tracking, and select Match Move. Then we would need to drag in the analyze motion into that match move well. And so now this rectangle is going to match the motion of the car. So I can bring that down to the car and you can see it's moving along just like so. However, if you wanted more of a null like structure, like in Adobe After Effects, you could use groups. So to do that, go ahead and right click on your rectangle. And I'm gonna actually bring this out of that group. Then we're gonna apply the match move data to the entire group. From there, we can go ahead and bring in the analyze motion. And so now that rectangle has that same animation. But anything we apply into this group is going to receive that same animation data. So if I wanted to say subscribe. So now these two objects that are found within this group, which I could rename null just for old time's sake. And so now those two objects are gonna have that same animation data. The next thing I wanna take a look at are track maps. So in Adobe After Effects, we could of course create a rectangle just like so. And if we wanted this rectangle to actually cut out and showcase the background, you can use what's called a track map. So to do that, we would select our car scene and find the track map option here and change it over to Luma Map. And so now everything inside of that rectangle is actually being cut out. And you can of course track this map and it will go with the car if you want to. To do this in Apple Motion, it is called an image mask. So again, I'm gonna create a rectangle. I'll put it over the car just like so. We'll go down to our car. We'll right click and select add image mask. Now we're just gonna drag this rectangle to that image mask and it is now technically a track map. You can of course apply your animation data to this rectangle and it will work just like it does in Adobe After Effects. You can also change your source channel over to luminance if you want to or if you actually wanted to cut out the car, we could change it to subtract just like so, and it would do that. And then we could apply another object behind this track mat, just like so, and we could change the color. And so now this object is actually showing through that track map. The next thing I wanna take a look at are keyframes. So in Adobe After Effects, we can of course click on any of our effects or whatever we need, the position to create a keyframe. Then we can move the object over and it will now create a keyframe between those two items. And then you can of course right click and select under the keyframe assistant easy ease out, easy ease in, or easy ease, and you can also do that with keyboard shortcuts. So now this has the two animation parameters. Then if you wanted to actually get into the graphs here, you can click this graph editor and you can move the animations around here. In Apple Motion, if we wanted to do that same thing, let's say we create this rectangle. From there, we can go into our properties. We can add a keyframe by selecting this icon. It's not the stopwatch, but it works the same way add a keyframe, then we can move our shape over to the right. 
you can see now this has the animation playing out. Now if we wanted to actually take a look at these animations, we could right click on them and select show in keyframe editor. So now we have all of our keyframes here. Then if we wanted to move these around, we absolutely can do that. Now if we wanted to do easy ease, just like in Adobe After Effects, we could right click on it and select ease both, or you could do ease in, ease out, as well as you can change your interpolation here to like a Bezier curve and you can drag that out just like so. I definitely wanna do a more in-depth tutorial on the keyframe editor as I think there's a lot more power here than people realize, but this is just a short, quick tutorial. So that is how you use the keyframe editor in Apple Motion. So in Adobe After Effects, there is this thing called adjustment layers, which I really love. They are great for applying effects across your entire scene. So to do that in Adobe After Effects, we'd of course go up to layer, new, and select adjustment layer. Then we could do something like curves and drag that onto our adjustment layer here. And then we could of course make our adjustments and the entire scene should be getting it. Of course, I made that rectangle white, so you're not really seeing it. Maybe we can change the color on this to be a little more gray, and then you'll see the adjustments happening. There we go. So you get the idea. The adjustments apply across the entire scene. It's great. So to do that same thing in Apple Motion, you're gonna once again actually use groups to do this. So if you had a bunch of objects that you wanted to all have the same colors, we could go up to filters and apply it to the actual group. And we'll go into color curves just like so, and I'll actually change this rectangle's color so you can see it more apparently. So if you wanted to, you could apply all of your color adjustments across the board using the group. You could also do this with effects, like distortion effects, so it's really up to you, but that is how you would actually do an adjustment layer in Apple Motion. The next thing we're gonna take a look at are expressions in Adobe After Effects. Now there isn't a perfect comparison, but I'm gonna show you the closest tool that Apple Motion has. So in Adobe After Effects, if we wanted to apply an expression, you could put push option, click on the stopwatch. We could type in something like wiggle and then we could type in five comma 40. And so now this is gonna do some wiggling just like so, but it can be annoying to remember the expressions. Of course, in Adobe After Effects, you can click on this arrow over here and there's actually different expressions that are remembered for you. So if you wanted to use a expression or a parameter behavior actually in Apple Motion, you would find the object you wanna move around, find your position settings, click on this down arrow and select add parameter behavior, and then you can locate wriggle, very different, <laughs> or you could select randomize, whichever you prefer. Wriggle's a little bit lighter than randomize, but for the sake of this, I'm gonna just do randomize. Then we can drag up the amount, which is really nice to have that ability. You can change your frequency and noisiness. You can change add and subtract, whatever you need to do to get the best animation possible. Okay, so let's say we use the expression, but we want the object to have motion blur. In After Effects, you would select the enable motion blur, you would toggle your switches here and make sure your shape has motion blur applied to it. So now this shape should have motion blur. It's maybe not moving enough, but you get the idea. It should have motion blur. But in Apple Motion, it's a bit different. You can't apply motion blur to specific objects. It just applies it to the scene as a whole. So to do that, you would go on up to the render settings and select motion blur. And so now this object right here has motion blur. Then you can actually go into your project and go down to the bottom and you'll find these samples and shutter angle. So if you wanted to change how much motion blur was on it, you can do that right there. Okay, so in Adobe After Effects, if you wanted to apply an effect, let's say a blur, let's look up Gaussian blur. We would of course come up here to the right hand side, look it up and then you drag it on and then you could just turn up your settings. You could of course animate it, do whatever you need to do. So in Apple Motion, this is actually at the top with the filters. So if we wanted to blur this group, we'd go to filters, go to blur and select Gaussian blur. And so now we can apply our Gaussian blur accordingly. If you wanted to repeat edge pixels, it's called cropping in Apple Motion. So that will just get rid of the dark edge there um, that you see from the Gaussian blur. The next comparison I wanna show in After Effects is masks. So if you wanted to apply a mask, not the roto brush, but just a regular mask, you would select your pen tool here, selecting your object, draw out your mask accordingly. It's got great Bezier tools. So to do that in Apple Motion, you will not select the pen tool that's right here. I wish you could, um, but you're actually gonna come over here to the far right, and this is your masks. 
you can click on this down arrow and then you can select the bezier mask and this will give you that same tool and then you can of course create whatever shape you want now if you want to animate this you're going to need to jump into your inspector i don't know of a keyboard shortcut i should figure that one out. Um, but then you'll go down to control points and click and add a keyframe and then you can move these points around as needed. I will say I think the Bezier curves are a little bit better in After Effects but these will get the job done. The next thing we're going to take a look at is shapes in After Effects. So of course you can come up here and select your shape tool making sure you don't have your actual scene selected. You'll need to click and create a shape just like that. You can of course also click and hold so you can get other shape types if you so desire. Whereas in Apple Motion, if you want a shape, you will just come over here. You've got just these few shapes, so we can create a circle or something like that. We could also create a rectangle. However, if you want even more shapes, you can actually jump into your library, and then you can go over to your left-hand side, and you will find all the shapes you could ever need. So if I needed a hexagon shape, I could do just that. And finally, the last thing to know from Adobe After Effects over to Apple Motion is working with audio. Neither of these softwares are very good for audio editing, but if you just quickly need to do some audio, of course, in After Effects, you jump over here on the right hand side, you can adjust your audio levels like so. Um, I'll be honest, I don't do a ton of audio in After Effects. I'm sure there's probably more options that you can do here, but I don't know them. So that's just honesty. But in Apple Motion, if you want to work with audio, there is an actual panel up here at the top. You select audio, and then you can change the audio levels for each individual scene. You can probably do that in After Effects, I just don't know where. Uh, you can change the audio for the entire scene. You have a few options like changing it left to right. It's not super great for working with audio, but if you need it, it is there. You can also disable or enable the audio for the entire project right here on the left side. So that wraps up audio. So that was 10 things from Adobe After Effects shown how to do them in Apple Motion. If it was helpful, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.